From Kashmir to Kanyakumari, India is a spellbinding mosaic of cultures, traditions, languages and an extraordinary mingling civilization. Keeping its age-old culture maintained, today the country is taking huge strides in the path of development. Namaste, I am your host Pratiksha and today in our episode of My India, we bring you some of the stories that will give a glimpse of our country's diversity, cultures and the developments happening in and around the world. When the IMF called the Indian economy a bright spot in an otherwise dark immediate future for the world economy, it was met with cautious optimism by the decision makers in India. The truth is, India had hunkered down in the immediate aftermath of the headwinds of the global pandemic and had chartered an economic course for the country, which had the best facets of cautious fiscal prudence. India is now reaping the benefits of her meticulously calibrated decisions in every aspect of the economy. Join us as we discuss how India braved and defeated all challenges to emerge the best economic performer in recent years. What has India done that others haven't in order to reach where it is today? One of the coveted five economies of the world growing at the fastest rate. The most straightforward answer is almost everything. From strategizing long-term economic goals to effectively implementing reforms and measures, and from little tweaks for optimal results to complete overhauling of several frameworks, the brains behind the Indian economy have successfully delivered on both individual aspirations and the nation's progress. If you look at the annual data, annual data, as you rightly said, we have grown at 7.2%. The projection was 6.8 percent. We have again exceeded the projection. That is something very positive. Where are we exceeding? We have done well on exports, but the most important thing that we have done well on is on the gross fixed capital formation. From bringing mom and pop stores under the purview of the government, in line with successful efforts towards formalization of the economy, the Modi government took off with an aim to ensure the tax base of the country was widened and the people at the lower economic ladder received enough opportunities for upward financial movement. The formalization of the Indian economy ensured incentives, social security benefits, easy access to credit and financial services to those who complied, and a complete makeover of the business environment of the country. Having navigated the initial phase of hardship where low-income business entities were affected, the long-term impact of government endeavors have started to bear fruit with nearly all businesses across the country contributing to the country's financial system. And while the smaller businesses were tracked and taxed for the larger good of the country, India ensured her big businesses continued to flourish and came up with mechanisms that enabled a fearless business environment. Businesses were deregulated and excessive bureaucratic measures and red tape were dealt a heavy blow. India has also done away with retrospective tax laws. India has cultivated a favorable environment for investors. India received a record 84.8 billion USD in foreign direct investment, including 7.1 billion in foreign direct investment equity inflows in the fiscal year of 2022. India is also making great efforts to accelerate infrastructure development. From airways to railways and roadways, a swift expansion and upgradation are set to enhance the macroeconomic dividends of the country. This makeover is also projected to significantly reduce India's logistics expenditure from around 16% to 10-12% to in the coming years. India's digitalization endeavors have also gained global recognition with an increasing number of countries seeking to emulate her transaction model. The digitalization effort has extended services and incentives to even the most remote individuals and entities. The government's visionary ideas and effective implementation have cumulatively positioned India on the path to achieving remarkable growth. Some of the results are already available for everybody to see. India's per capita income has witnessed a tremendous spike recently and is projected to grow to about 5,200 USD by 2032. 
The other thing about the Morgan Stanley report that I found really interesting was that the per capita income of an average Indian will rise 2.36 times, nearly two and a half times in the next eight years. The Indian approach has sparked a fresh sense of optimism among multinational corporations, which are looking towards the Indian market with great enthusiasm. From Apple Inc. to Google, major corporations across sectors are expanding their footprints in India. Some say India is likely to become the most attractive investment destination around the world in the near future. The country has already registered a significant leap in global rankings in terms of ease of doing business. The Indian market is thriving with a renewed vitality and the government is ensuring a sustained period of such economic growth, preventing any form of slowdown. In a diverse and multicultural country like India, Sufism has been cultivating tolerance and harmony among communities for ages. The Darga of Baba Shah Meena Shah serves as a similar example of the teachings that have inspired people of all faiths to propagate love and harmony. Let's have a look. In the heart of the culturally vibrant capital Lucknow of northern Indian state of Uttar Pradesh lies the mystical Darga of Hazrat Maktoum Shah Meena Shah Rehmatullah. The Mazar of Baba Shah Meena Shah is admired equally by all the devout people, Hindu, Muslim, Sikh and Christians and is visited by them on a regular basis, making it a remarkable symbol of communal harmony. The sacred shrine, believed to be 500 years old, was established during the reign of the Sharki dynasty. I have been here for 7-8 years. You will get a lot of love from here. The peace and peace are not for them. They will come here and sit here and sit here and sit here and sit here. They will get a lot of peace and peace. You will get a lot of peace from here. क्योंकि यहाँ पर एक धर्म से कोई नहीं आता है यहाँ पर सभी आते हैं और अगर आप यहाँ देखेंगे तो मोस्टली आपको हिंदू भी भाई मिलेंगे हमारे मुस्लिम भाई भी मिलेंगे और मैं पिछले आठ साल दस साल से जो आ रहा हूँ मैं रेगुलर आता हूँ रेगुलर देखता हूँ और डेली जो है लोग आते हैं और हर जो है थर्जे भी लोग आते हैं The ancient shrine of Baba Shah Meena Shah, a symbol of religious and cultural harmony, not only fosters the bond between the people associated with different faiths, but also propagates a profound message of an inseparable bond that unites them. Tens of hundreds of devotees from different parts of the country visit the Darga to pay their respects. It is believed that nobody leaves empty-handed as the holy shrine bestows its blessings upon all. कई मुरादे पूर्व में सबसे ज़्यादा मानसिक मानसिक शांति मिलती है यहाँ के कोविड में भी आता था रहा लोगों ने मना किया कोविड नहीं आता ये तब भी मैं आता रहा तो basically हर जगह हर बार मांगने नहीं आता हूँ ईश्वर का शुक्र है अदा करने अदा करने भी आता हूँ कितनी बार आता ज़रूर हूँ कोविड में स्वस्थ हूँ सब लोग हैं इससे बड़ी मुराद क्या पूरी होगी अपार्ट फ्रॉम बीइंग अ प्लेस टू परस्यू स्पिरिचुअलिज्म वेरियस अदर इवेंट्स लाइक लंगर्स एंड कवालीज आर ऑर्गेनाइज्ड ओकेशनली व्हिच आर विगरेसली पार्टिसिपेटेड इन बाय द डेविटीज कमिंग देयर द म्यूजिकल इवेंट्स अपलिफ्ट एवरीबॉडीज स्पिरिट एंड ब्रीद अ सेंस ऑफ जॉय इनटू वेरी सोल्स दे आल्सो रेजोनेट विद द हार्ट्स ऑफ द ऑनलुकर्स लगभग दरगाह को साढ़े पाँच सौ साल से ज़्यादा का वक्त हो गया है और ये दरगाह मुगलों से भी पुरानी दरगाह है जब शर्की डायनेस्टी हुआ करती थी जो है जो अवध को रूल करती थी तब की दरगाह है तब के बुज़ुर्ग हज़रत मखदूम शामना शाह रहमत लूफिया कराम की जो मोहब्बत और जो पैगाम है वो उससे तो सभी लोग मुतासर होते हैं चाहे हिंदू हों मुसलमान हों ईसाई हों सिख हों क्योंकि यहाँ पे एक बहुत बड़ा मेडिकल कॉलेज है किंग जॉर्ज मेडिकल यूनिवर्सिटी है तो जो लोग परेशान होते हैं जो लोग जो है अपने अकीदत मद या जो एडमिट होते हैं उनको लेकर आते हैं तो उन लोग के लिए लंगर का अहतमाम किया जाता है वो लोग दुआएं मांगते हैं नमाज पढ़ते हैं और बहुत ज़्यादा तादाद में मखदूम शाहमना साहब रहमत आल से दुआ के लिए आते हैं 
Sufism through its mystical teachings have enlightened and encouraged the world to propagate love and harmony among all communities, the enduring essence every society always needed and needs for its well-being. And now a roundup of some of the major stories that made news recently. India's space agency launched a rocket from the country's main spaceport in the southern state of Andhra Pradesh that sent a spacecraft into orbit and toward a planned landing next month on the lunar south pole, an unprecedented feat that would advance India's position as a major space power. About 16 minutes later, ISRO's Mission Control announced that rocket had succeeded in putting the Chandrayaan-3 lander into an Earth orbit that will send it looping toward a moon landing next month. If the mission succeeds, India would join a group of three other countries that have managed a controlled lunar landing, including the United States, the former Soviet Union and China. The Chandrayaan-3 spacecraft would also be the first to land at the lunar south pole, an area of special interest for space agencies and private space companies because of the presence of water ice that could support a future space station. A building in India's western Surat city of Gujarat state has surpassed the Pentagon to become the largest office in the world, said officials. Uh, Surat Diamond Boors, which is 6.7 million square foot construction area, which is a 9 tower ground plus 15 story building, hai, two basement. These are all 9 towers and every floor is connected. Hai. So, this is a single building. Technically, it becomes a single building. The Sura Diamond Boards, which is spread over 6.7 million square feet, is a diamond trade center consisting of nine towers of 15 floors that will be housing more than 4,500 offices. Its functioning is expected to begin from November this year. Surat is the world's largest diamond polishing hub and nearly 90% of the global diamonds are polished here. The city houses nearly 10,000 diamond units, accommodating polishing as well as cutting of the stone, according to India's Gem and Jewellery Export Promotion Council. India's Tata Group will build an electric vehicle battery plant in Britain to supply its Jaguar Land Rover factories delivering a major boost for a car industry in need of domestic battery production to help secure its future. Well, we're having discussions with lots of companies and we're in competition with countries all over the world for these big investments. So obviously those discussions are commercially sensitive. Under the plan announced by the government and Tata, the company will build its first Giga factory outside of India in Britain with an investment of four billion pounds, creating up to 4,000 jobs and producing an initial output of 40 gigawatt hours. The BBC said the government would provide subsidies worth hundreds of millions of pounds to Tata. Britain has lagged European rivals in building electric vehicle battery Giga factories with more than 30 planned or under construction across the European Union. Britain currently has one small Nissan plant and another in the works. Muradabad A city of Uttar Pradesh has always been a symbol of religious harmony where Sufism has flourished and propagated the message of love and tolerance within the society. The centuries-old Darga of Sufi Saint Shah Mukammal Sahib is a testament to the living example of Ganga Jamuni Tehzeeb of our country. Today in our show, we take you to the Holy Shrine of Baba Shah Mukammal Sahib and witness how the Holy Shrine has not just been instrumental in cultivating an environment of brotherhood but a lot more than that. Have a look. 
For centuries, the tombs and dargahs have served as popular pilgrimage destinations for both Hindus and Muslims. The key teachings of Sufism has always endeavored to uphold unity and togetherness among the various communities, and this practice endures even today. The centuries-old Mazar of Shah Mukammal Sahib in the Muradabad district of Uttar Pradesh is a shining example of communal harmony. Each day, thousands of people cutting across religion flock to Dargah to bow their heads and offer chadars. The Dargah of Baba Shah Mukammal is also believed to have played a pivotal role during India's struggle for independence. मैं बहुत जमाने से दर्जा हूँ और ये हजरत शाह मुकम्मल साहब राम को लेके मजार है और यहाँ वो मुरादे पूरी होती हैं जो कहीं हिंदुस्तान में नहीं हो क्योंकि आपका नाम ही मुकम्मल है तो इसलिए मैं तो एक बचपन से यहाँ सब समाज के लोग आते हैं यहाँ ना किसी के साथ नीच है ना ऊंच है ना जाति है ना धर्म है जो सरकार के मानने वाले हैं जो बाबा के मानने वाले हैं वो बाबा के दरबार में आते हैं और बाबा के दरबार से फैजिया भोगते हैं People often come to the shrine seeking solace, escaping the hustle and bustle of daily life to establish a connection with the inner selves. The Darga of the Sufi saint has always been a driving force behind the unity of the Hindus and Muslims in the region. They also say that the Darga motivated them to join forces in the country's prolonged battle for independence. <laughs> موکلمر जो भी लोग अपनी तमन्नाएं ले लेके आना चाहते हैं, तो वो सारी परेशानियों से मुक्ति हो जाती है और उनकी परेशानियां हल हो जाती हैं। The holy shrine of Baba becomes a happy place for music enthusiasts every Thursday as a number of them gather at the dargha to entertain the devotees with their captivating kavali performances. People in turn come in large numbers to enjoy these festivities and pay tribute to the shrine. The beautiful and inspiring tradition of Sufism has a lot to offer through its literature, poetry and songs. For ages, it has propagated love and harmony in society which is getting passed on even today. And now we bring you a few short stories about the recent developments and happenings from around the world in our section of World in Focus. A group of women specialists keen on preserving Palestinian, Arab and Muslim heritage began a campaign to digitize old books, some dating back three centuries, as a way to protect them from getting damaged or lost. After the decision of digitizing a book is made, which is usually based on its historic importance, the team would begin the process of cleaning and restoring the book and thus advanced to creating a metadata file and digital images using a newly imported scanner device. The aspect of adding the metadata will enable readers to search for the book online. Some of the books document the Ottoman era in Gaza. An opera about the penultimate ruler of Mexico, Tenochtitlan, sung in Nahotol, pleased audience in Mexico City. The play is a multidisciplinary show with dialogue in classical Nahotol language. The play is a multidisciplinary show with dialogue in classical Nahotol language, 
and features more than 150 performers including singers, musicians and dancers. Kuwait Lahog belonged to a ruling Mexica family and was the brother of the emperor of the Mexica empire, Moctezuma Coco Yotzin. When Spaniards arrived, he ruled the region of the Ista Palapa, one of the most important cities in the area. India, the land of rich culture diversity, proudly holds a heritage of various art forms, each showcasing the country's artistic prowess. Among these treasures is the illustrious art of Basoli paintings. Originating in the small town of Basoli in Jammu and Kashmir, Basoli paintings are a fusion of Hindu mythology, Mughal miniature techniques and local hill art. With a history dating back to the 17th and 18th centuries, these paintings have captivated art enthusiasts for generations. Let's have a look. An exquisite form of painting characterized by a vigorous application of primary colors and deep-set facial patterns is one unique feature of Basoli painting of Katua that leaves the viewers mesmerized at first glance. While the captivating Basoli painting draws its inspiration from Vaspanism, the themes have mostly been taken from epics and Purans. Hailing from the foothills of the western Himalayas, the art defies convention as it draws out the illustrations with vibrant and bold colors and has been spread throughout the regions of Jammu and Punjab. While its origins can be traced back to the 17th and early 18th century in Basali, the painting later found its way to other hill states of Mankot, Noorpur, Kullu, Mandi, Suket, Balaspur, Nalagar, Chamba, Guler and Kangra. The old eccentric art of Katwa have been awarded the geographical indication GI tag, making it the first art piece of Jammu and Kashmir to have the license to preserve its uniqueness. And now, when the Amanath Yatra has begun, the government is making efforts to showcase these artworks. ये लोकल आर्टिस्ट से ज्यादा ये हमारे कॉलेज के बच्चे हैं जो इसको यहां पे पेंटिंग को बना रहे हैं बसोली पेंटिंग जैसे कि आप जानते हैं जीआई टैग वाली पेंटिंग है जो कठुआ की बसोली की एक फेमस बहुत ही अब तो पूरे देश में ये प्रसिद्ध होने लगी है तो इसीलिए क्योंकि जब यहां पे इतनी भारी मात्रा में यात्री आते हैं तो प्रशासन ये चाहता था कि ऐसी पेंटिंग जगह-जगह पे हो ताकि लोग उसका अप्रिशिएट करें और लोग भी देखें कि जम्मू कश्मीर में कठुआ में बसोली में लोग कितने ज्यादा कार्यरत हैं और कितना उनमें कैपेबिलिटी और टैलेंट है the walls of the town became canvas for the college-going students who exhibited their exceptional skills of sketching the bold and vibrant folk art of hills in the gateway of Jammu and Kashmir. The alluring selfie points created at various sites in Katua were drawing the attention of pilgrims who couldn't resist stopping by the wall paintings to appreciate the art and take a selfie to seize the moment. आज मैंने यहाँ पे बनाई है बसोली पेंटिंग तो इस बनाने का मेरा इसका मकसद ये है कि जो भी यहाँ बाहर से स्टेट से जो लोग आएंगे वो हमारे कल्चर के बारे में जानेंगे यहाँ पे आकर और उनको उनको पता चलेगा कि हमारा जी के कल्चर क्या है वो जगह जगह हमारे जो जितनी भी जम्मू कश्मीर में जगहें हैं देखने के लिए वो उनके पोस्टर लगे हुए हैं ताकि वो इसलिए लगाए गए हैं ताकि जो टूरिस्ट हैं वो उनको अपनी तरफ अट्रैक्टिव कर अट्रैक्ट कर सकें the traditional art form originated in the Basali town of Jammu in Kashmir is a fusion of Hindu mythology, Mughal miniature technique and folk art of the local hills. The intricate form of miniature art requires a special type of stone colour exported from Jaipur and paint brushes made out of the long hairs from the squirrel tails. These materials are essential for creating the fine details that are the key characteristics of this art form. This is a very old form of painting. There are many rules and regulations for making it. And we also call it a miniature painting. We have told you that the border is yellow. And in the maximum border is yellow. If it's night, it's a grey border. And it's a grey baseline. We also call it a stone color. 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 Stone colors which are in Jaipur. The Basali painting of Katwa is merely a glimpse of India's culturally rich and diverse art and craft. 
Around the corner, one can find ample examples of such wonders which would bewitch you with their old charm. That's all we have for you this week. Your comments and suggestions are important to us. Do give us your feedback on myindia at the rate anin.com. I'm your host Pratiksha and it's a goodbye from the entire production team. Yeah.